This investigation included an examination and a re-examination of all evidence provided by the federal government, including witness statements, photographs, video evidence, original and enhanced, toxicology reports, the use of force, export reports, and other types of evidence. As you can imagine, the amount of material generated by the United States Department of Justice over the course of a 10-month investigation was voluminous. Once our office was satisfied that the federal materials were thoroughly reviewed and analyzed, we initiated a further state investigation into the evidence provided. Our investigation included, among other actions, contacting independently the eyewitnesses to the event to the event to review their description of the event to determine if any additional information could have been gathered or evaluated. Again, we went out and re-interviewed all of the witnesses to the events to the event that we that were that we were able to contact. Let me be very clear. Our objective was to, con to conduct a full and thorough examination of the evidence obtained from the federal government before any additional investigative steps were taken, and certainly before any conclusions were drawn. This process was to be conducted irrespective of any pressure to come to a quick conclusion. Not in this investigation or any other do we sacrifice completeness for speed. Our investigation has concluded that Officers Lake and Salamone attempted to make a lawful arrest of Alton Sterling based upon probable cause. During that encounter, Mr. Sterling continued to resist the officer's efforts to arrest him. The officers used verbal commands of varying degrees and tried to control Mr. Sterling with several lethal techniques. Toxicology reports showed the presence of several scheduled and illegal drugs in Mr. Sterling's system at the time of the incident. Considering this, it is reasonable that Mr. Sterling was under the influence and that contributed to his non-compliance. Throughout the encounter, the officers attempted several non-lethal techniques to gain compliance and control of Mr. Sterling's hands. Their efforts to do so were a direct result of the information relayed to them by the Baton Rouge Police Department dispatcher. That, and that was that Mr. Sterling was armed with a firearm. Therefore, their attempt to gain control of Mr. Sterling's hands were well-founded and reasonable under the circumstances and under Louisiana law. Furthermore, the officer's concern that he was armed and dangerous was in fact subsequently ver verified and correct. The seminal question presented is whether officers Howie Lake and Blaine Salamone can be held criminally <coughs> responsible for the death of Alton Sterling under applicable laws of the state of Louisiana. Our job was not to determine whether the Baton Rouge Police Department's policy was followed, or if certain tactics or language was more appropriate than others. After a thorough and exhaustive review of the evidence, the facts that can be established beyond a reasonable doubt, the law and jurisprudence of the state of Louisiana and the obligations of prosecutors under the Code of Professional Conduct, the Louisiana Department of Justice cannot proceed with a prosecution of either Officer Lake or Officer Salomon. This decision was not taken lightly. We came to this conclusion after countless hours of reviewing the evidence gathered and turned over to us by the U.S. Department of Justice, 
including voluminous documents, many photographs, extensive video ev evidence, and after, again, after our own interviews of eyewitnesses to the event. Before a prosecutor can bring a case before a grand jury, he must determine whether he has sufficient evidence to warrant a conviction based on the facts of the case upon a fair and thorough review of the evidence and applicable law. The standard of proof for any criminal charge is proof beyond a reasonable doubt. This is the highest standard of proof in the law. Every element of any crime contemplating must meet this test. That is, every element of any crime contemplated must be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. This is true in both state and federal prosecutions. There is not a lesser burden in the state criminal cases when compared to federal criminal cases. As I previously mentioned, the opinions of the use of force experts, two, to be specific, were used in an analysis by both the U.S. Department of Justice and by our office. Each expert was selected by the U.S. Department of Justice. Each independently concluded that both officers acted in a reasonable and justifiable manner in the shooting death of Mr. Sterling. Career staff members of the U.S. Department of Justice came to the same conclusion after the federal investigation relative to federal law. In drawing our conclusion, the Louisiana Department of Justice has considered all of the evidence compiled by the U.S. Department of Justice, the opinions of independent experts used by the U.S. Department of Justice, our independent investigation and review, including our own independent direct interview of eyewitnesses in every aspect of, of, of the applicable laws. As with every criminal case, we must analyze the evidence, the law and the facts, and then draw a conclusion. But we are always mindful of the human element. I know the Sterling family is hurting. I know that they may not agree with this decision. I am ever mindful that a mother who prematurely loses a son, a child who loses a father, experience a experiences a pain that no one should ever have to endure. I'm asking that everyone consider the family in the coming days and spend their time and energy in lifting them up rather than creating further division. I pray that God blesses and keeps the Sterling family through this difficult time, and I thank you for your attention. Today. Mr. Attorney General, will you be releasing the video that the